Bex Chilcott, welcome to The Right Note. Thanks for having me. And welcome back to Australia for, for a visit. Yeah. How does it feel to be Nashville bound again soon? How does it feel to be going home to Nashville? Uh, it feels comforting. <laughs> you know, I'm not very good in the cold, so I know <laughs> that I'm going to be complaining a little bit about the weather, but, but it's um, definitely, you know, a home away from my original home now, so I'm itching to get back there, yeah. What, how does it feel home? I mean, what is it about Nashville that, that you feel comfortable with or is it a particular place in Nashville? Yeah, definitely. I, I struggle to leave the east side. <laughs> but, um, you you're know, just, I feel like... You're just like, too hipster, really, aren't you? <laughs> I just feel like I have everything I need there. But, you know, this... Um, you know, I'm from Perth, so for me, coming from a smaller city, I'm... I'm not sure. I, I've lived in London before and I have been to LA and New York and I'm, I'm just not sure I would feel as comfortable as I would in a larger city like I would in a smaller city. So Nashville has this charm for me because it's kind of like as the size of Perth but it's got everything I want in it. Like there's a creative community, there's all kinds of music that I can watch any night of the week and um, and now it has really good coffee too. <laughs> so <laughs> just set. <laughs> You went there because if you're going to be an Americana artist, a, a roots, American roots music artist, you really need to get out of Australia for a start, don't mm -hmm. you? But there, did you find that there were people who understood what you were trying to do and who were encouraging in more than just, yeah, that's nice, that's, that's cute, you're, you're playing this kind of music way? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't really take that's nice, that's cute for a for an answer to what I'm doing, you know. So it's like I definitely would tend to seek out who my community is so that I can be surrounded by people that inspire me basically and that's what I did. I moved to Nashville and there's a whole community over there that were, was playing Roots music and um, and just to be able to be a part of that and witness it and then do that myself is really the result that it had. So, yeah, absolutely. The new album has... A mix of of um, Americana roots music, but also some quite dirty sounds. Um, you, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where'd that come from? Uh, it came from the realization of what I wanted after releasing the last record. Really, the last album was my first album, and uh, I toured a lot off that record. And through playing all those shows, I kind of got to that point where. I felt like I was missing a feeling on stage and that feeling came through a sense of expression through either vulnerability or just heart out, you know, giving it my all from a kind of punkier, rockier sense, you know. And so I feel like the the album has actually a balance of both of those things. It's got a, the stripped back song, which is quite stark, like I am a woman, which I, allows me to do the acapella on stage and then all the way to the other spectrum with songs like It's So Cruel and Believe in Heaven, which is just fuzzed out, you know, if I could have four guitarists on stage, I would, you know. Um, so it really came from a live sense where I just wanted to express myself so that I was feeling something different inside. Yeah, it's really the joy is that, that moment on stage. You know, you put all this other work into it uh, the, the studio time flies by so quickly and you have a small amount of time on stage and all of a sudden it's gone. So you want to have that feeling at that prime moment, you know. Choosing to start the album with those two songs, uh, yeah. the, the grittier songs, it, it makes a statement about uh, how you want to change people's perception maybe. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I did do that. You picked up on that. I mean, um, I also feel like they're two of my favourite songs um, off the record and I like to start the record with two or three of my favourite songs I feel are just make a statement in general, whether it be sonically the direction that it's changed or um, lyrically. So um, I feel like it was a combination of those reasons but it definitely doing that, yeah. And then you have the, the title track which is, is quite a, a pop song in, in lots of ways. Yeah. 
that, again, that that's another another angle to to take with you, which might surprise people. Yeah, well, I'm hoping that that this record does that because, you know, as I was, it's a lot more thought out and a lot more. Um, it's really realized a vision for me this time, whereas I feel like the last album I was really learning a lot, and uh, the last album I felt had a lot of pop sensibilities as well, but. And I've always been a sucker for a, a good hook. You know, it's just actually thinking about how I want to approach those hooks and, and put them in the songs and then have them, you know, how they, they sound, I guess, whether it be pop or rockier. And and the, the 60s dream pop era is kind of, it's one of my favourite eras ever, you know, and it's so um, sunk in, you know, inside. So uh, it was nice to have some of that, you know, layout. Did you take confidence in making those changes or, or pushing it out a little bit more from Bloodshot showing interest and support for, for what you're doing? Now you're signed to Bloodshot Records? Yeah, they they signed the record once it was finished. So I, I felt extremely co- confident. You know, I had to say to myself, look, I just have to honour what I want to do, you know, and whatever happens as a result of that is what will be, you know, and – not have any expectations or any kind of doubt, you know, and it's it's part of my personality to continually change. I mean, I've I've lived a bunch of lives before I was even a musician, so I think it's just the way that my mind thinks as well and and um, becoming more in tune with what I want musically combined with not kind of – I don't really feel like I want to sit in a little box, you know. It's just never been my style, so it was like – to honour what was inside, it felt fine to push in that direction, you know. Is there any connection in making those decisions with a, a big decision you made about a year ago to to give up drinking? I feel like there's a hell of a lot of clarity that I'm able to access now that I'm not um, drinking all the time or even some of the times. It's not going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, absolutely, I feel that... Um, there's a lot less – there's still a, an abundant abundance of self-doubt because <laughs> I think that's part of the writing process to be the kind of critic that you need to be um, for myself. I'm not speaking for anyone else um, to make the best work that you can make. But um, there was definitely that sense of clarity and uh, the word I'm looking for is um, conviction, sense of conviction. So absolutely, I think there's a few tie-ins there. I think the the big question we all want to know is what does Bill Murray think of the record? <laughs> I'm your, yet your to good hear. Friend, Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to hear what he thinks of the record. I was still writing it at the time um, that we met him, but it was um, quite the hilarious interaction. <laughs> you you haven't caught up with him since since your, your moment <laughs> on the plane. I didn't personally. I mean, Nikki actually took his email address from him, but uh, I just like to leave things like those. Uh, moments in time as they are wrapped up in little moments in time because they're so rare you know um or at least that's the story you're going where it is. With, you no, it's perfectly where it is i haven't started stalking him like not at all <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's stalking you yeah hopefully <laughs> we'll check him out at the next gig yeah okay, bex chocolate thank you very much for your time thanks for having me bernard